there and welcome back to Sarah's Kitchen Garden at sarahbackman.com. We are in Sweden, south of Sweden, and it's late November. It's an amazing sun today. I really enjoy this fall weather, but it, it should not be fall, it should be winter. <laughs> It was quite a while since I last uh, did a, a, a vlog and uh, the reason is, is not that I think it's like boring or complicated or anything. I was just sick of uh, handling the bad sound. I know how, how important it is with a good sound if you would like to keep people like watching and listening. Using this um, a vlog camera. I was not before able to connect it with a wireless microphone and I made several tries but it just didn't work and I didn't have time to fix it because I was in the middle of a, a manuscript for another book. But today I actually succeeded <laughs> and I bought myself uh, a few things and I managed to connect my wireless microphone. So today you can see me completely wireless. Waha! Well, I asked you a couple of days ago on Facebook, on both my Swedish and English Facebook pages, uh, if you would like to see more vlogs from the garden, and you said yes. So this is what I will try to do for you now. This year is, has been difficult because it's, it's been dry. It's been too dry. We ran out of water in our well, so I couldn't water my garden. When I see the kitchen garden now, today, in fall, when we are nearly uh, into winter, I feel a bit um, disappointed, to be honest with you. First, I felt disappointed uh, on myself, at myself, um, because I didn't manage to do better. It took me a few days to <laughs> recover from that thought. <laughs> it was not me that was doing a, a bad job, it was actually the weather and the climate. When thinking about that and, and how difficult it was um, growing vegetables in summertime, I think I, I made a pretty good job. But what we have will be enough food for a very long time. So in, in that way, I'm not disappointed. It was just, I, I wanted it to be like in another way. Most of the time, I, I'm, I'm happy with what I achieve in the garden. But, but I like to have those, you know, the difficult moments and difficult things in the garden as well, because that is what what's going to like uh, take me forward i hope you understand what i mean that sometimes it's it's the most difficult things that that will give you like fuel to to actually do better next year one thing that i am specifically uh, happy about this year in the garden is this fence that i have made it's, it's very simple uh, we put those like poles into the ground. I had to get some help from my husband doing this because I am not strong enough. Uh, I managed to collect all the family saying that, all right, this is what we are going to do this afternoon. We are going to do another fence. All right, they said. So we all got together and we fixed it. And I really um, like it because it, it looks pretty. I actually don't care that much for, for pretty things except like flowers uh, and I like also the combination of different vegetables uh, growing uh, together side by side and I think that some combinations are really nice looking but um, except that I am completely focused on growing food at the moment and maybe I was a bit surprised then that this looks so nice look This area in the kitchen garden, it's the uh, mid-section in, in the open garden. And uh, in this area I grew uh, brassicas, 
this year. I think it's very good to grow the brassicas all together because it's easier for me to feed the soil by mulching constantly and carefully. And that's what I try to do in all my garden because I think it gives the soil a rich life. Um, in a way it makes uh, the work in the garden much more easier since I am alone gardening uh, and I don't share this interest with uh, my husband for example so I have to manage the, the whole space on my own by mulching it's doable so in this area I grew like cabbage and kale Brussels sprouts and broccolis and well a whole lot of different brassica varieties now when it's fall I try to harvest so that I, I empty beds today for example I harvested uh, two Savoy cabbages. I then chose to take them from this bed and not in the neighbor bed. Now it is nearly empty and that gives me an opportunity to start all over with this bed and prepare it for next season. And next season I will grow uh, tomatoes in this area. Uh, I could grow potatoes but now we have a large, it's a small farm actually, uh, at my neighbor's place and we are five families growing vegetables together and um, they like to grow potatoes so we will grow potatoes also next year. So now I try to um, to fill up this area with tomatoes instead. When we had lunch a couple of minutes ago we had uh, fried soya beans and I was like oh I have no plan for soya beans for next uh, season and the thing is that soya bean is really one of our favorites. We, we fry them whole right and then we, we eat them. We don't eat um, like the pod we, we only eat the bean it's really really tasty and the whole family likes it so I want to, to grow plenty of soya beans this requires quite some space actually this year I grew soya beans in one of the uh, beds that I have uh, mulched with uh, sheep wool I think I f could fit in like 100 and 120 or so plants so I need um, basically the same area for next year and I don't have it because next year the the area for like peas and beans it's it's very tiny so I can't fit in all the beans that I I want to grow I will try to leave um, a whole bed for soya beans on that end of the section right today I thought uh, before I go inside I could just finish this bed because I had yesterday three sacks of uh, sheep wool that was given to me and I was very happy. So I will go bring the bags and simply just cut down the, um, the stems of the cabbages. It's a, a cabbage with the pointed head. It's filled with kraut that I have grown here and I have still one savoy cabbage and I will leave that. But the rest of this Brussels sprout, for example, they are so tiny so I will just cut them down and then bring them to the kitchen so we will eat them soon. Let's see what we can do with this. Such a nice break to go out in the garden for, for an hour or so. I love the smell of the garden. It's not that nice sitting <laughs> among the, you know, the rotten plants of uh, cabbages, but it's also nice in a way because you can, um, you can see the whole process. I think in my garden, I, I really appreciate that because I was not afraid of dying, but I was afraid of death. Well, I, I couldn't stand the thought of it, really. 
when I started to grow this garden and saw, I mean, the meaning of death, <laughs> things changed in a way and um, cannot say that I feel happy that I will die one day, but I mean, it, it is sort of the purpose with, with everything that you live and die. The garden has given my life, I mean, it's, it's like um, a meaning. It sounds as if I don't appreciate my family and my job and everything, but I, I, I do think you understand what I mean. It's, it's like when producing my food and living with this food and living with this area and uh, feeling creative and everything, it's just, it's just another layer in life that I didn't know that. I didn't know that it was possible to feel this way about life before I, I actually <laughs> grow my vegetables and it sounds like crazy but it's true. I actually have to say uh, thank you to myself for doing this because I'm doing a damn good job. I am. Well, well, I will leave you now but uh, I so much appreciate that you follow me and if you want to I will be so happy if you subscribe my channel of course. Thank you for today and have a lovely day in your fall garden. Bye bye.